Hi, um, let's continue our previous uh, uh, talk about the IP fire firewall. And uh, so now I, this is my IP fire uh, virtual uh, machine. And uh, so right now it is a firewall and a router uh, for home internet access. And uh, here is the IP fire uh, web interface. And uh, yeah, let me show you a, a performance issue that, uh, uh, yeah, let me, uh, so here is, um, I have a firewall and uh, firewall rule here. So uh, when a user send a HTTP request to the firewall, uh, it will forward uh, the uh, HTTP request to a server behind the firewall. So let's look at the fire uh, the firewall rule details here. And uh, so the source is from anywhere. Uh, so this is a, a net a destination net port forwarding and. Um, so the destination is the back in the server behind the firewall uh, dot one dot 50 uh, protocol TCP uh, destination port uh, 80, right? So this is a basic uh, firewall port forwarding uh, rules. So now if I, I send a HTTP request for, from a client, uh, to the firewall uh, port 80 here, and uh, I should get a response from the back end server behind the firewall. Okay, so I got a, a response here. So this is a response from the from the back end the server. Uh, okay. So. Um, now I'm going to do a, a same flood test here. So let's go to the system to monitor the CPU uh, usage graph. And uh, okay, so this is a CPU graph, uh, a CPU usage graph for the firewall. Now let's start. Um, from the same same client, let's start a, a same flooding. Okay, and uh, okay, let, let's uh, stop now and uh, let's also show a top command. So this is a top command and on the IP firewall, IP fire firewall, and uh, I have a, a eight virtual CPU, and this is a CPU usage. So very minimal uh, CPU usage, okay? So now let me start the same flooding attack to the uh, to the firewall, to the port forwarding uh, services. Now let's uh, look at the CPU usage uh, from the top. And uh, you can see here uh, CPU four got a hundred hundred percent and uh, CPU 7 got uh, 73 right so the CPU increases uh, significantly and uh, here is the graph uh, so I click here because now the system is very slow and uh, I, I barely get a response, but uh, yeah, I think eventually the graph will show the, the current uh, uh, usage. And uh, you can see here, if I create the top, so right now my, my SSH session kind of uh, very uh, sluggish. Like when I type in a key to create the top, uh, it, it doesn't response, and uh, see, see now you see the CPU graph, 
uh, it jumps uh, very high uh, current uh, IRQ CPU usage is 90 percent very high and uh, yeah so what this demonstration shows is that uh, uh, for the IP fire firewall if it is under a uh, uh, some flooding attack uh, uh, this virtual machine is it's barely uh, usable and uh, you can also see here the, the throughput. Uh, the, it's like 12 megabit per second. So this is in my local uh, network uh, test. Yeah, so if you have a, a powerful physical box, maybe that can uh, perform better. And, uh, but uh, still, if, you, if the box is under a gigabit, 10 gigabit uh, of flooding attack. Uh, I don't think the IP fire can handle this uh, 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 flooding traffic load. And um, yeah, uh, which is understandable because uh, basically the IP fire uh, used the uh, IP table rules, uh, letter filter for packet filtering. And um, and also the reason the IRQ CPU usage is high because the uh, the, the sink, under the sink flooding uh, there are a lot of packet uh, per second and uh, the driver needed to handle handle the packet. Okay, so this is uh, IP fire without. Uh, Kernel, kernel eBPF and XDP. So next time I'm going to show you a, a IP fire with um, uh, with uh, XDP acceleration to handle the uh, same flooding attack, and uh, and you will see a much better performance for the IP fire. Yeah. So, but for now. Uh, this is just uh, to show you uh, how bad the IP fire can behave under sync flooding attack, uh, at least uh, for this virtual machine instance. Okay, yeah, thanks for watching.